Welcome to the Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast, where me and my co-host, you might know him, his name's Grady Jarrett, the Falcons star defensive tackle, talk about a number of different topics, starting with what he's doing off the field to interviews with guests like Hall of Fame linebacker Ray Lewis, Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney, Grady's wonderful mom, Alicia Jarrett, and brave shortstop Dansby Swanson. So let's take a look back at the first four episodes of the Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. So let's kick it off with our first guest, the Hall of Fame linebacker, that is Ray Lewis. How did you come up with the iconic squirrel dance intro that you did? And how did you pick the hot in here song to go with it? And yeah, if you could just go into detail on how that whole thing <laughs> came about. <laughs> First of all, thank you. Um, and then it, it was, it's, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it really quick, right? Because there was a military veteran, um, retired military veteran named Kirby Lee, who lived in our hometown. And he had some, he had some mental issues. And so, <clears throat> He took a he took a liking to me in high school, and he, he used to always just every time I came home, he used to always dance. He used to always do something. He used to always have a song. He used to always have something for me. And if you see on his arm and on his chest, on his back, he got me tattooed like all over him, right? And so I'm like, so I started helping him out. I started to get him houses and clothes and just different stuff. I just really wanted to help him out. And one day I came home and there was this famous song um, in Tampa called The Squirrel, right? So he used to go, let me see you squirrel. Mm -hmm. Let me see you. So, so, and it was all type of dances that you could do with it. Like all type of dances. Like me and Sal used to do it in the locker room. Like just mess with it though. You used to just play with it. Mm -hmm. And so one time I'm home, one time I'm home and uh, he showed me, he showed me his version of it, right? And I was like, I was like, Curve, who does the squirrel like that? And I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that on TV. And he was like, no, you're not. No, you're not. I said, I guarantee you I do it on TV. The next week, I went I went into the um, I went into the uh, meeting. I said, Marv, Marvin Lewis, my defense coordinator at the time. I said, Marvin, when, I, when I'm introduced, I'm going to do something. When I come out, you cool with that? He was like, I'm good. <laughs> I came out of the tunnel. And I'm telling you, I I was the last one called and I came out of that tunnel and this is when it was like no music at first. Yeah. And I hit that thing for the first time and the crowd lost their mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, Jay, I'm telling you, Twitter was broke before Twitter was even out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That it thing was, was crazy. The emails, oh, he has to dance every week and da 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 and as I talked about in that episode, I had to ask Ray Lewis the question of how he came up with that iconic squirrel intro dance and his explanation was even better than I thought it was. So let's get to our second episode. That was with Dabo Sweeney, who recruited Grady to Clemson, who's a very important person in Grady's life. And let's see what he has to say about how he found Grady. And I'm like, well, let me go check him out. And he's like, I know we probably don't. He goes, I know we probably don't have a spot for him. And and our D coordinator at the time, you know, we were we definitely we were looking for a, just a different body type. And mm -hmm. uh, and and I, but I remember coming over there, and I think he had just a white T-shirt on. You know, and he just had just an old T-shirt. Yep. And I start watching him. So we're doing when we got to the OLDO, and and he was he was undersized. But I'm just telling you, I sat there, and even to this day, I hadn't seen anybody at our camp like that. And I, I watched him the whole session, and I mean, absolutely dominate and destroy. I mean, I felt sorry for them kids that was out there. And, and, and not only would he win his rep, he wouldn't go wait in line. You know, because sometimes guys are bashful in those situations. And that's one mm -hmm. of the things I always look at. You know, you kind of see like, you know, sometimes them guys they'll start they'll start counting the line like, yeah, man, you going and they they want to go against the right guy. You know, Grady didn't care. Yeah, and Grady would get back. He'd just go cut right back in line because he was maximizing his time and he and he 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 knew he had limited time. And I mm -hmm. mean, he just went. He just kept going and kept going. And I'm just watching this kid and I and he had a look in his eye that uh, you know you don't see all often. You know, he had a, he, the look in his eye was a look of purpose, a man on a mission. 
And so I watched this whole thing. And when it's over, I went over to Dan Brooks and I said, good Lord. I was like, now tell me a little bit more about this guy. <laughs> now listening to the way Dabo talked about just how much of an impact Grady has made at Clemson was incredible. But I think the third episode might have been my favorite because listening to these stories from Alicia Jarrett about how great he was as a kid is pretty priceless. He's always been a competitor. Um, and uh, he's always been very resilient. But with that resiliency, he's also been very empathetic at the same time. And it's, it's rare that you find somebody so competitive at a young age and still very uh, empathetic. And uh, that's, 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 that's definitely Jared. Maybe Jared. Humble. He's give, a humble maybe, person. Give him a little example of maybe what you mean by that. So yeah, I can give an example. I know, I, so, I know exactly, I know what you're about to do. So, 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 so people can so, understand what you're so, saying. So he wants me to give an example. I can give you a couple, okay? <laughs> so you, we'll, we'll start off at the, at the parks early, early on. Um, I think it was his, his, maybe his second year playing um, uh, Warner Roberts football, and he uh, he was a big guy, so he would, they called him truck, and they called him truck for a reason, uh, because he would truck down the players. I mean, he was just, he put them on the ground. And, but then he turned around, and he, he'd look, and then he'd go back, and he'd pick them up. And, you know, coach was like, Okay, your job is to put him on the ground. You don't have to pick him up. But he did that, and he did that often. You know, he wanted to make sure that he was doing his job, but that he was also not hurting, you know, really hurting somebody, too. So, um, yeah. but uh, another example uh, of his competitive competitiveness, he um, he's he's broken one of my TVs. He's since replaced them, but... Uh, All he, right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew, that, I knew that first story was coming. I didn't know you about to put... put my... <laughs> <laughs> well, listening to Alicia talk about her relationship with her son sure was special to hear. And for our fourth episode, we decided to go across Atlanta sports teams and interview brave shortstop Dan P. Swanson, who shares a similar story to Grady as they both grew up in Atlanta and now are the faces of their hometown teams. Just as like a competitor, you know, Obviously, being the best of the best of what you do, being, you know, top pick um, growing up or as a professional to this day, even what like what do you find as your biggest motivation to continue to get better and be better? Or, um, you know, when you when you look back and reflect on your path, like what was the thing that pushed you to be like, look, I'm going to be the best I can be. And, you know, it, it got you where it got you. I I think you can relate to this. Uh, when you're when you're a competitor and you care and you want to win, like there isn't really anything else that you need because how I was raised was to always like do my best and to be the best that I could be in anything that it was like. Well, we hope you enjoyed those clips of our first four episodes. We've got a whole lot more coming for you on the Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. So if you want to like us, subscribe and rate and review us, we will be back for more Getting Real with the Grady Jarrett podcast.